Let's take a look at how we can automatically find the brightest values in our images and apply glows to those areas in Photoshop. We will also record the steps we take to create the glows into a Photoshop action, which will allow us to open up any image, run that Photoshop action to automatically create glows to the brightest areas of that image. So here is a Photoshop action I created, which automatically transforms your text into the entire effect that you see here. So if I just hide all the layers and folders here, you can see here's the original text and here is the effect generated by the Photoshop action. And I'll leave a link to this Photoshop action down in the description if you want to download it. But there is one component missing to this effect, which is the glows. And that is what we are going to be creating together. We are going to be looking for the brightest values in this design and emitting a glow from that area. So I have this action set up the top here, which is what we are going to be recreating. If I select the action here and click play, you can see that it has applied glows to the brightest values throughout the design. And if you look into the layer panel, it has also created this glows folder. So if I turn this folder on and off, you can see what it is doing. So if I wanted to decrease the amount of glow, I could just decrease the opacity of the folder here. If I go inside this folder, the action has also created five different layers. And if I turn this all off and start from the bottom, you can see that with each layer that I turn on, the glow intensity increases. So I'll go ahead and delete the glow folder and I'll select the action and delete that as well because we will start from scratch. So I'll click the plus icon here to create a new action. Call this one add glow. I'll stop the action for the moment so I can rename this to add glow. And the first command we need to record is the step of selecting the very top layer so to actually record that step, I cannot have the top layer selected. So I'll just select any other layer here, click the record button and hit the shortcut Alt plus a period key. And that will add the command of selecting the front layer. So if I click stop for the moment, select the layer, click on the action and click play, it will select the top layer for us. Next, we need to add a new empty layer. So I'll hit the record button and I'll hit the shortcut keys, Control Shift N or Command Shift N to create a new layer. And let's just call this one for the moment, Merge. So you can see it's added that new layer, Merge. And with it still recording, what we want to do next is uh, merge everything that we see here uh, on the canvas onto this Merge layer. So to do that, we hold down Control Shift Alt E or Command Shift Option E. And you can see that that has now merged everything that we see on the canvas onto that Merge layer. So if the action's still recording, let's rename this layer to Glow. Next, I want to duplicate this layer. So hit Control or Command J. And let's rename this top one to Selection. And so with the Selection layer, this will be the layer that we actually use to select the areas that have the brightest values throughout our design. And on the Glow layer, this will be the layer that we use to create the glows from. Next, I'll record a few steps to ensure that our design has a pure white value. This is important as with each new image I run this Photoshop action on, I need that guarantee that a white value exists in that composition. So with the action still recording and the selection layer selected, the first step is to desaturate the selection layer. So I'm going to go to the image menu, adjustments and down to black and white, select OK. Next, I'm going to apply auto levels. So Control Shift L or Command Shift L. That will just improve the level of contrast throughout the design. Next, we're gonna go back to the image menu, adjustments, and down the bottom to equalize. And equalize will just give us that guarantee that a pure white value exists in the composition. Next, we will apply threshold. So again, back to the image menu, adjustments, and down to threshold. And we're going to drag this handle here all the way to the right. Okay, so to 255. And when we do that, what we are left with is a visual representation of the brightest values in our design. And it's these areas in white is where uh, we are going to be emitting the glows from. So I'll click OK and you can see it has recorded the step there. So I'll click Stop, 12 open that step and you can see it has recorded level 255. So let's go back a step now and see what would happen if we didn't apply auto levels and equalize before applying threshold. So I'll just delete this selection layer for the moment and we'll duplicate the glow layer. Okay, and I'm just going to double click on the threshold command here, which will open up the threshold window. And you can see that with the level that we set before 255, there are no white values in our composition. So we don't have any white values to select, which means that if we don't add the order levels and equalize commands here, 
the action would run into an error because there are no white values to select. So I'll delete these two layers and then we're going to run the action, get back to where we were before and also just to make sure that everything is working correctly. So I'll select the add glow action here, click play. And we are back at the last step of threshold. Now we are going to create a selection of these white areas. So I'm going to hit the record button and up to the select menu and color range. And you just want to color pick any white value here. So do that, click OK, and it will make a selection of all the white values. Next, I'm going to hide the selection layer for the moment. I'm going to select glow. And down the bottom here, I'm going to hit the add layer mask icon. Now, if I click stop for the moment, and if I hold down Alt or Option and click on the Layer Mask to view it, you can see that our selection is has now been applied as a layer mask to our glow layer. So if I now move this layer around, uh, hit V on the keyboard and move it around, you can see we have isolated this glow layer to only the brightest values in the design. So let's hit the record button again. And what I want to do now is apply this layer mask to the layer. So I'll select it right click, apply layer mask. And I will also delete this selection layer, no longer need that. So I'll select it, hit delete. And with the glow layer selected, I'm going to change the blend mode to linear dodge add. And this will be our starting point for creating the glows. So with the action still recording, I'm going to rename this to glow one. And I'm going to apply a little bit of blur. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just apply a radius of two, so just a little bit of blur. Click OK. I'm going to duplicate this line now, so Control or Command J. Let's rename this one to Glow 2. And I'm going to apply Blur again. Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And this time, I'm going to increase the radius to around five. Click OK. Duplicate the layer again. Control or Command J, Glow 3. Back to Gaussian Blur. And we'll increase the radius some more somewhere in there and we'll duplicate it again. Glow four and same process, blur it out a bit wider. And click OK, duplicate it. And we won't apply any additional blur because we're basically just duplicating uh, four here, which already has quite a wide uh, radius. Uh, you can even duplicate one more time if you wanted to increase the blur some more. Let's just because it won't glow six. So with that done, I am going to shift select all the glow layers and we'll group them. Control or Command G and rename this one to glow. And I always like to apply a layer mask to the folders just in case I need to mask out any clothes that I don't want. And let's just change this color to yellow. All right, I'll click stop. Let's now see if everything is working. So I'm going to delete the glow folder and up to the top of the action here, select Add Glow, click Play. And there we go. If I open up the folder here, all the layers are there. So we've got control over uh, the amount of glow by simply adjusting the opacity of the folder. We can also knock out layers as well as another way to decrease the amount of uh, glow. Now, if you wanted to add more glows throughout your design, what you could do is under the threshold command in the list of action steps here, to the left, there is a gray box. Now, if you click that, uh, you'll see it fills in with this box here. And what this means is that when you play the action and it gets down to the threshold step, the threshold window will pop up and it will basically allow you to adjust the settings before continuing. So if I just delete the glow folder, select the action, click play, we get down to the threshold step here. And you can see this was the, this was the uh, step that we recorded, 255. But this actually allows us to adjust the setting a bit. So if I wanted to include more of the design into the glow area, I can just adjust this handle here to include, uh, yeah, a bit more. So let's just say I crease it to there, click OK. And now you can see there are a lot more glows happening simply because we adjusted the threshold slider just a fraction. Let's take a look at how this action plays out on this photo here. So I'll select the action here, click play and it's going to go down to the threshold step. So you can see at threshold 255, these are the brightest values throughout the photo. Now, if I increase the, if I drag this slide to the left a little bit, 
we start to include more of the photo. So these are the areas where the glows will emit from. Click OK. And now we have it. So if the glows are too strong, I can select the glow folder and click on this word here, opacity, and dragging that to the left, I'm decreasing the opacity of the folder. So I can just add a little bit of glow if I wanted to, or I could jump inside the folder here and turn off some of these layers or uh, duplicate them if I want to increase the glow. So that's a look into the process I went through to automate the creation of glows as part of a bigger Photoshop action. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.